Hello and welcome to Kinboshi Sumo, and today is a little different because today I have uh, a friend here. Nick, how are you doing today? Great! How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, except for I'm getting over a plague and uh, we, you know, missed the actual Bonske release to do our preview, but such is life. Yeah, that, I mean, that happens to the best of us. Like, I'm getting super sick again. I blame. Third, fourth time. I blame babies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When they're like I said, when they're jamming their dirty little fingers in your mouth every chance they get, it'll happen. Exactly. Which, uh, speaking of jamming dirty little fingers in mouths, let's talk about sumo and uh, a little tsupati, shall we? <laughs> Hell yeah. So we're just gonna break down the bonds K uh, to start things off, but it's easy at the top because Terano Fuji had double endoscopic knee surgery, so he is definitely out for November. There will be God, no. I, I know. It's. It's so... I, I hope he stays out for January, too, to be honest. like With the level of the surgery that he got, and they say they had like, bone spurs, and they're cleaning up all this stuff out, I'm like, just take the time. You can't get demoted. Just take the time. Exactly. The, the Sumo Association already made an announcement that they're going to let him sit out and not punish him for it. And I think they have to, because no one really looks close to joining him at Yokozuna. And so if they lose him, it's just like, you're going to go yokozuna list for maybe years. Yeah, I no, I don't think there's anybody else who's like who's gonna take that rank. Yeah, and I think all of us would agree that we are sick of watching him. Like, it's exciting to see guys get Kinboshis. It, it's the name of this uh, series. Um, mm -hmm. But lately, the number of Kinboshis scored on Terano Fuji have started to feel a little hollow because the dude's just not healthy, and it's such a bummer because, like we saw in his 2021 campaign, like no one in the division is better than him, except that his knees are made of my marzipan. I mean. Even as injured as he is, he's still just rolling people. He'll just pick them up. He tosses yeah. them around like he's so good. <laughs> I'm shocked that he's able to pick up these 400-pound men on those knees. It's ridiculous. And, and he doesn't even look like he's struggling when he does it. Yeah. He just he constantly has that, like, his, he sticks his upper lip out like he just doesn't care about anything. It's fantastic. <laughs> but, sadly, we will not have our Yokozuna, but we do have the Sanyaku, so... Let's start things off there. We only have two Ozeki this time, um, but Takakesho and Shodai are there. Nick, how are you feeling about our Ozeki? Um, I'm going to be honest. So I know everybody was so upset with Takakesho with the whole Henka yeah. last time. Like Everybody online was super pissed, but it's like he did it once. He I think it. he's great. He's a good fighter overall. He never does it. I think he's fantastic. I think he's the most solid Ozeki I know. had all year. And, and, and a few years ago, he, he came within a hair's breadth of actually going to Yokozuna, and he would have been an incredibly young Yokozuna. I, I think he would have been like 22 or 23 at the time. Like, he's only 25 right now, I believe. Um, and so I, I also love him. He's just fun to root for because he's a little guy who uh, does this power sumo, you know? Like, he's an Oshitaoshi guy. He's a pusher-thruster, and, and yet he's tiny. The dude's only 175 centimeters. Like, he's like five foot five i think like it, it's That's yeah it's ridiculous um so i'm with you i really like takake show i think he's been performing well he did get chewed out by the sumo association after this tournament all the ozeki did um for sort of like dishonoring their ranks which you know classic sumo association type stuff um but i'm with you i'm like i the du the dudes had back-to-back double-digit win tournaments uh, in November last year, he came down to the final day where he almost won the tournament but lost out to Terano Fuji, I believe. Um, so, I don't know. He's one who I do expect to do well, but on the other side, Big Show Daddy, the bear from Kumamoto. Oh, God. Something in my bones just tells me he's going to win this time. Just... Hey. It's it just really... feels right. Like, I just think that's going to happen. It's the every other, right? He, he just had yeah. a terrible boss show, so surely he's going to get double digits and, and maybe win the whole thing. It's, it's his home tournament, his home boss show. He's from Kumamoto, which is on Kyushu Island. This is up in Fukuoka in northern Kyushu. So it's, it, I, I'm with you. This could happen. And I just feel like with the way he kind of treats everything, it would just be the perfect, like, just throw in everybody's face to just... After doing 4 and 11 to just win. Yeah, exactly. Just, like, only gives a crap when he's caught up on. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. I honestly, I kind of wonder about it. Like, I've looked into, like, they said he's been caught up on, what, four times, five times? Man. And I'm like, did something happen where they're just like, oh, you're not going to be Yokozuna, so he doesn't care? Or, like, you don't get to Ozeki if you don't care. I know. What it's happened? so true. 
his and his rise was kind of surprising because really he got there on the back of one incredibly stellar tournament in September of 2020. He went 13 and two, won the U show, but also got a Kanto show. Like that's what pushed him up to Ozeki, and ever since then, it really hasn't been there. But I'm with you. If you look at like the physicals. Uh, he's, he's got the height, he's got the reach, he has this awesome fighting style where he doesn't even need to use a guy's mawashi, he can actually grapple someone's body and still control them out of the ring, like, again, when he wants to. Um, but he's one of these guys who, in terms of, like, physical stats, I totally feel like he could be a Yokozuna one day if his mental game was ever there. Yeah, and he's, he's one of the only ones that never gets injured. I know! He's just perfect for the sport, but he just, I don't know, I guess he doesn't want to? I Right, I, I have no idea what's going on. Like, sumo's a very individual sport, so I, I can see how these things would mess you up. Uh, like, you know, go, going on a losing streak, but like, then why can't he string two winning tournaments together? Why doesn't having one good tournament turn his mindset around? I, I don't understand. I feel like there's got to be something going on in the background. Like, I know my conspiracy like, brain makes me think something's happening. Yeah, like, I, I know he's got diabetes, but like, so does Terano Fuji. Do, so does pretty much everyone in the division. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, but Shodai is, like we said, Kadoban, so he might be dropping down. But someone that we've been looking to bump up is Wakataka Kage. Um, I mean. He blew his shot at going to Ozeki, and now he's essentially rebuilding from scratch. Like, 11 wins in the last tournament, that's, I would say, step one of going for that 30-spot uh, uh, record to try to get up to Ozeki. His two tournaments before that with eight wins and nine wins, just not going to cut it. Like, he's not getting to Ozeki after this particular tournament. But do we think he can keep up that stellar form? Opened 0-3 last tournament, then finished 11-1. and How are you feeling about uh, Waka? He's hard to predict because he's so shaky at the beginning. It takes, like, honestly, till day five or six before you know how well he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And he is just, I don't know. I want him to do well, but I think he's just a little unpredictable, or it's like his jump up just was too sudden. Yeah. It's, it, you know, you are right. Like, even in this run that he's had where he has not had a uh, Make Kochi since July of 2021. Um, but even in these stretches where he was grinding out nines, eights, nines, there were a ton of awful starts, and just to, to run through that, so in that run, in order to get to nine and six in September of 2021, he had to win his last five matches. Uh, in November of 2021, he had to win his last six matches to finish eight and seven, won his last five matches in January of 2022. Like, like you said, he... He's great. It's almost like maybe he has the physical stats and stamina to outlast everyone else, but when they do come in fresh, the size maybe is a problem for him. I don't know. I think he just, for some reason, just takes a little while to get into the groove of things. Like, he's clearly good. Like, oh, he's obviously. good enough to do it, but maybe it's just like still gaining some of that experience. I know, and he's one that I really wonder where, if he does put this run together and get to Ozeki, does he hold it? You know, or is he another one of these guys who's like up at Ozeki and it's clearly the highest he's ever going to be and he's just grinding there? I do think if he gets up to there, that's that's the highest he'll go. Yeah. I, I don't see him going to Yokozuna, but maybe, you know, guys his size have done it in the past, just not in this modern era necessarily. Or like, like Hakuho was his size, was totally like him early in his career. But Hakuho put on a ton of weight and then became the greatest Rikishi of all time. You know, I don't know. Well, yeah, not that it's... Oh, no, he only got to Ozeki, but, like... Yeah, right. A great rank. Yeah, <laughs> Still, yeah, yeah like, exactly. Still, like, four people. Yeah, agreed. Um, and then, uh, speaking of Wakataka Kage, uh, it's sort of... Uh, it's interesting. He kind of had uh, this little rivalry with Hoshoryu, uh, I would say, last year, and then just kind of sprinted away from him into the Sanyaku. But Hoshoryu's caught up now. They're both at Sekiwake. They're both at the top of Sekiwake there. Uh, two guys who definitely focus on their grappling, um, their Mawashi skills. Hoshoryu being a Mongolian, so he comes from that traditional Mongolian wrestling style, which is really exciting, just means, like, basically his grappling and his throws are absolutely stellar. But when you have your uncle, uh, Asa Shoryu, who, in my opinion, um, the reason Hakuho was as dominant as he was throughout his career is because the Sumo Association um, sort of disgracefully kicked out Asa Shoryu. Like, 
we were set to have one of the greatest rivalries in sport, and certainly in sumo, with those two guys having showdowns. And then they kicked him out. And off he, I mean, the dude's a jerk, but like sports need villains, man. And I think Hoshoryu, with his mean mugging and his like pushes at the end of the ring, is like trying to channel some of his uncle, but he's just not the same guy. I, I don't know. How do you feel about Hoshoryu? I. I'm gonna be honest. He's somebody I forget about him all the time. Oh no! Oh no! That's the that's what we're talking about. That's the problem. Yeah. He's very consistent. I'm looking at his record. and He's good, but like until he like walks up, I'm like, oh, I forgot that you were even participating. I feel like I usually remember a lot about the Sanyaku, but he just slips by me for some reason. And it's like he he'll put on great matches, but then yeah, you look down and oh yeah, eight wins, nine wins. Like he's he's like he's a grinder, man, and like. <laughs> I don't want that. I want him to blow dudes away. I feel like he's solidly going to be in, like, the Sekiwake range. Like, he's, like, your challenge run, essentially, for somebody like Wakata Kakage to see, like, can you get up to the next one? I know. I'm with you. I, I think the same for him, uh, stuck in that Sekiwake, maybe, and always living in his uncle's shadow. Um, but speaking of Sekiwake, so we have a new old Sekiwake, as uh, we did lose an Ozeki, Mitake Umi, like, man. What, one of the quickest runs you could have had for jumping up to Ozeki and then dropping back down, which is awesome. Like, not awesome because it makes me happy, but, like, this has been the dude's entire career. He was yeah. always an, yeah, he was always a really inconsistent Rikishi. Um, and so it was actually outside of the norm that he put together so many stellar tournaments. And even that he continued to be good that first tournament at Ozeki where he had 11 wins and really kind of just fell apart in the second half of the tournament but otherwise was challenging for another U show. Um, Mitake Yumi is obviously talented. The guy's obviously good, but I don't know. Do you really, what are your expectations or thoughts on Mitake Yumi? I don't, it's tough because, I mean, he's been fighting, like you said, decently enough at Ozeki for a while. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't think he's going to stay in the Sanyaku or he'll hit like Komasubi, but it's hard to know, like, will he recover mentally from the fact that he just got a huge demotion from his, like, basically once in a, career shot at Ozeki. And the fact that he um, isn't healthy still. Like, he's got he's had this right shoulder injury for, like, two tournaments, I believe. Yeah, I think... Yeah, you're right. Man, so... Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy, because that guy is another one that, in terms of, like, physical stats... Mitake Yumi, if, if you could just cut his career in half, just like Shodai, and, like, just look at the good parts, you'd be like, yeah, no, Terano Fuji, go ahead and retire. Uh, we, can, we can find some new Yokozunas, but, like... The bad side of the coin with him. Ugh. Yeah, I just don't... I think he's going to drop a couple more ranks before he maybe starts to gain ground again. Yeah. That... I, I, I'll... I'll be... Su it's like, I'll be surprised, but I won't be surprised. You know what I mean? Like, he's, he's too good for that, is why I say I'll be surprised. But, like, if he's hurt, and he hasn't been good lately, then, yeah. I mean, I, I, I never would have thought that... Takayasu would fall out of Ozeki and then spend so long trying to get back. So maybe me Takayumi is going to sing the same song. Yeah, I mean, we're like Toji Notion. He's so good, but like yep. that injury just basically wrecked him and dropped him down to a mid. mid totally. Rank. Yeah, he's, he's a, he's a mid-division grinder now. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then, so up in Komosubi, we'll, we'll kind of do these guys in a big block. Um, but, so Tamawashi... Uh, you show champion, the Iron Man. I feel like that was almost kind of like a comeback as like an FU uh, to the sumo world in general that like his Iron Man streak got broken by those BS COVID rules in uh, the September Basho, which just, by the way, like I'm all for the public health side of it, but it, no one can tell me that that tournament was handled correctly. No. Oh, God. And when I even, I always thought like, oh, why don't they just keep them separate once they're there, so, like, yeah. to address some of those issues. And they said, people were, like, shocked when I suggest that. They're like, they can't do that. They have to be all together. Like, they don't. No. Every sport does this. Yeah, exactly. All these bubbles and all of this COVID stuff, like, man, yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, but, but, you know, comes back and then wins a tournament because we're essentially fighting in this yokozuna -less era when anyone can do anything. So, at 37, Tamawashi wins his second Yusho of his career, and now he's a Komosubi. Do you expect him to keep this run up, or do you expect him to drop back to the high Maegashiras? I, it's hard to know, because he was the, is he one of the oldest to ever win a Yusho, isn't he? I think so, yeah. I, I don't know about the older history of sumo, um, but definitely this modern era. I don't, I think, 
with how he's been doing, I could see him doing well in this tournament and still going up. Because it's not like he's going to fight two different of people. Yeah, yeah, he's already been fighting the top dogs, yeah. I could see him go up to Sekawake. Yeah, I, I think that's a probably a deserved rank. Well, especially if he gets double-digit wins in this tournament, then it's just oh, yeah. it's a foregone conclusion. He's going up. I was actually kind of surprised that he only went to Komosubi. I thought that if they were going to have a second tier of Sekiwakes anyway, that they might just push him up there. I was kind of surprised because they've done that a couple times this year, but then just not for him. Yeah, I know, which, I don't know, it, it it's fine, but yeah. Well, uh, he, it would have come with a nice little pay bump for him that I'm sure he uh, misses. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we've got Kiribayama and Daisho. Uh, Kiribayama, another guy like Hoshoryu, a grappler, a Mongolian, super exciting guy. I do like him, but I don't know about you, but I'm kind of in the same boat where, like, uh, he's he's so good, but... I, he doesn't seem to have that extra something that's going to push him on to Ozeki or beyond. No, I agree. Like, he's probably floating roughly in the range that he's going to be at right now. Like you said, he's fun to watch, but he's not Yep, he's not at the Ozeki level. Yeah, he's one of these guys who, like, if he dropped in the Bonske, um, then I would say he can challenge uh, for you shows. You know, if, he, if you yep. give him a few three, four, five cream puff matches to pad his record... Then yeah, he can contend for it because he can beat all the guys at the top. The problem is just when he has to fight all the top guys every tournament. Then I'm just like, all right, well he's gonna be nine and six then. I, I have to say with Daisho, I'm so excited, just selfishly, to see him drop because he stole Abi's spot when Abi slipped. I think it was in May, <laughs> <laughs> and he swapped spots, and now I see him drop. I'm like, good. You yeah, like get it? Nothing against him personally. I just. I like Abby better, and I didn't like to see that he stole that spot. I love it. There you go. Um, he's an interesting one. So I love his fighting style anyway. Like, so aggressive, just going at guys. Um, one of these, like, I'm, I'm going to empty both barrels at the beginning, and then where are we after that? Um, yeah. But, yeah, like, he also, like, I don't I don't get his deal. He's another dude who I feel like has all the physicals and just doesn't put it together. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him down in the high Maigashiras after this tournament either. I think realistically that's probably where he's at. Yeah. Um, and then, everybody's favorite, the flying monkey, the troublesome customer, Toby Zadu. I'm so excited to see him up this high. I it's don't so, think he'll stay this high, but it's it's so fun to see him up here. I know. It's beautiful. Like, I, you know, the Sumo Association had some sort of quote where they were like, uh, what was it? It was something like, he, he started his career with circus sumo, but now he's doing real sumo, and look what happened, or whatever. Like, they, you know, they hate that idea, that running around the ring, and I'm like, nah, forget you, I love it, it's exciting. I like when they do something a little bit different. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's funny, because he's like a little guy, and he fights like a little guy, but then, like, he's not. He's, he's, he actually has some weight that he can throw around on his opponents, um, which I think really helps him, uh, maybe makes it so that he can do that uh, alternative style to throw someone off. Because um, he's still uh, 130 kilograms, uh, you know, he's a d- d- pretty big dude. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, even um, Taro no Fuji had said a few tournaments ago that he learned something, that he learns from fighting Tobizaru. You know, like, I think it's important to have that uh, diversity in fighting styles like you talked about. Yeah, I was going to say, like, having somebody like him just come and come up and, like, it really throws off, especially some of the top, like, making sure one to Sanyaku, because they don't deal with somebody of that size or like his agility mm-hmm. very often mm-hmm. so it's good for them to see that yeah and, and good for us you know because otherwise the sport just becomes like who's the biggest you know like if everyone you mentioned even the Takake show Henka or whatever like the Henka has this really complicated relationship with sumo fans you know they like it when a little guy does it they hate when a big guy does it and I totally understand why but it's one of those things that like if sumo was just one thing, it wouldn't be sumo. If sumo was just, like, two big guys run into each other and they have to push each other straight backwards. Okay, that's a spectacle that we could watch, but it's not sumo anymore. You, you don't have the diversity of... You know, there's... What, what's that stat? There's, like, a hundred different winning techniques, you know? like Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so those are the Sanyaku, um, the guys who hypothetically should be the contenders, especially with the Yokozuna out... But really, what's interesting to me most often are these dudes in 1 to 5, uh, M1 to M5, because these are the positions where these are guys who clearly want to push up into Sanyaku. They're clearly very talented, but it's where we can see lots of dudes slip up. 
because it's where they actually have to fight all the Sanyaku. They, they are pretty much no cream puff matches for anyone here. So I'm going to real quick just go down the line here and mention all of our M1s through M5s, and then maybe we'll pick out just a couple that we really uh, want to talk about and who we think maybe can challenge versus who we think is up here and going to sort of slip up. Um, yep. Yeah, you got Takayasu leading the crowd. Obviously, Challenge got another second place. Heartbreaking. Um, but Big Papa Yasu still up here. We'll see. Last time he was at M1, it was rough. Kotonowaka finally got up to M1, but is still being denied that Sanyaku debut. Uh, then at M2, we've got Meisei and Ichinojo. Ichinojo winning at Basho, but then having this terrible fall. Meisei finally clawing his way back after an absolutely abysmal Basho a few tournaments ago. Um... Uda and Midori Fuji, two exciting fan favorites with a little boy and another one of these acrobatic guys. Uh, Wakamoto Haru and Sada Naomi. Uh, Sada Naomi's still like living off the vapors of that uh, <laughs> challenging tournament a few months ago. Um, and then Hokuto Fuji and Nishiki Fuji. Nishiki Fuji, one of these guys who came up from Jurio just... He was in Jurio three tournaments ago. Um, and now he's all the way up into this sort of contender range. And Hokuto Fuji, a guy who was... Um, a pre-professional ranks at Yokozuna um, and had these extremely high expectations, this bulldog. But, uh, yeah, it's been rough. I don't know. What do you think about our M1s through M5s? Anyone you think can do great or anyone you think is overranked here? I don't understand why Kota Nawaka is not a Sanyaku. Like, he's been getting shafted nonstop! He beat, he's beat almost all the Ozeki multiple times. He has not beaten Terra Fuji, I don't think. But basically everybody below him, he's beat at least once. Yeah. So I'm like, he's consistently doing this. I'm like, I don't know. I think I'd be shocked if after this tournament he's not up there. Like, it doesn't make sense for him. Yeah. He'll get it, up there for sure. Yeah, it's like he's he's basically looking for an opportunity. You know, someone someone needs to drop or enough someone's need to drop. And like you said, if that means if Tamawashi takes a step back, if Tobizaru is up too high, if Daesho continues this rough form, like, yeah, it, he could he could finally get there. But it, it, I agree, it's insane. Um He's another one who uh, comes from family royalty. You know, he's got Ozeki's and uh, Yokozuna in his family bloodline. Um, so maybe the Sumo Association are, like, trying to test him for that reason, you know? Like, they're like, oh, you have to earn it. You're not just going to get it. But, like, he's clearly good. Come on, man. Like, Kotonowaka versus Daesho, Kiribayama, Tobizaru, even Tamawashi. Like, I, I don't know. You can take your pick on who you think is better. I None of them are better than him. Like, I'm not saying they're worse than him either, but if they deserve to be there, he does. I agree. I don't know... I'm looking at the Sanyaku, and I don't know anybody that necessarily... It's like, oh yeah, they're for sure, they're going to beat him. Yeah. Weirdly enough, Shodai's done really well against him. Yeah. That's been kind of a weird one. Yeah. Shodai. Just, you have to throw out any and all data collected with Shodai. There's just yeah. no understanding him ever. Um, uh but like you put it, I'm super excited to see Takayasu up here. Yes. I know it was a little rough the last time. Oh, Taka Big Papa. Twice this year. Heartbreak everywhere. He keeps getting so close. I know. And just heartbroken every time. And it's like, I, you know, Terra no Fuji's going to be out, so part of you is like, oh man, maybe Big Papa, maybe this is his time. But I'm like, no, in each of these runs that he's had, he's actually beaten. Terra no Fuji has not been the problem. <laughs> it's, no. Yeah. Ugh. It's always like a mix of people. Like somebody will just throw him off. He hits a couple of you know rough patch for a couple of matches, and yeah. that's it. That's and all it, it takes. It, right, exactly. Like you said, it's it's crazy stuff. Like a loss to Myogiru in September. What what was that? Uh, a loss to uh, Endo in uh, the May. Like why are you losing to Endo? Or again that March tournament that he was challenging for. Um, just <sighs> Abi. Uh, Abi's style should not match up well against Takayasu, and yet, final day of the tournament, he had a chance to win the tournament outright, lost to Abi, and then lost to Wakataka Kage in a playoff, just like, oh, absolutely devastated. Yeah, Abi's my favorite, but I was like, that didn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, it's insane, yeah, especially when Abi didn't even need it. I believe that was Abi's ninth win, like, he had already secured his Kachikoshi, is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, oh man. Um, so I'm with you. Both those guys at M1, I could see them making a challenge, but it'll be tough for them, you know, because they still have to fight all the Sanyaku, but they can do it. Um, I also just like, Hokuto Fuji started off really impressive last tournament, challenging for the U show, and then fell apart. Just, I, I don't know, man. I'm kind of done with this guy. It's so frustrating that, like, he has it. You can see every once in a while he recaptures that shine of, you're like, oh yeah, 
this dude was a college Yokozuna, this dude was a high school Yokozuna, like, this is, he's clearly talented, and then, uh, I don't know what happens. Well, yeah, because he went, what, 10-5 and five last time, but then did terrible the matches before, did okay, like, he's just, I don't know. Yeah. He, um... I- yeah, he had an 11-4 and four in November last year, but that's when he was fighting down at Maegashira 12. Like, I think he's another one of these guys that, like, almost... He can contend for titles, but he needs to pad that record with three or four cream buffs. Yep, no, I agree. Like, realistically, skill... Or, not necessarily skill-wise, but just consistency-wise, probably five, I don't know, if he'll go much higher. And then yeah. he dips back down... Yeah, like I can, I can see him again, like having a grinder now, like a nine and six here, and then going up to M three for uh, January of next year, and then getting like absolutely blasted and going six and nine and dropping back down. You know? Yep, yep. So it's so easy to see them drop. Like Mace had a couple of bad tournaments, went down to fifteen. Yeah, yeah, like crashing out of the division, and then obviously stabilized it, and now he's back up. But yeah, um, yeah, God, yeah, going from making sure Kobasubi to three. To 13, and then having to claw his way back up again. Yes, and I've been impressed. I love Meisei's sumo. Um, he's a guy who I'd love to see him make a run at Ozeki, but yeah, that that blip in his career there where things fell apart, I'm just like, I feel very uncomfortable ever putting my trust in you. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's got it all shaken off, but... We'll see. I guess it happened last time. Yeah, and one thing I really like about him is the determination. Like, one, fighting through a back injury, which is part of the reason why he um, had that drop, at least early on. But two, uh, he opens these tournaments, like, similar to, like, what you mentioned with Wakataka Kage. He's had a lot of bad starts, man. He hits bad stretches, and he shakes it off like nobody's business. If you could put Meisei's brain in Shodai's body, you'd have a Yokozuna overnight. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I. It, it's no question for me. Um... Anything else for sort of these outsiders, the outside contenders in the M1 to M5? Oh, absolutely. I'm so excited to see Nishka Fuji up here. Dude, this this rise has been stellar. Tell me about him. I'm so excited. He's just been fighting so well. And, like, one of my favorite moments with him was when he just straight up went went up one-on-one against Takakesho. Just, like, wanted to match a style. Didn't win. You're not yes. going to. Oh my god, that match, like, nobody, nobody fights Takakesho, pusher thruster, face slap, like, nobody does that, because he's the best, I'm not saying he's the best wrestler in the division, but, like, that specific fighting style, it's Takakesho, no one else is close. The same way that Abi is the best with the long arms, Tsubati, and going for the, Nori going for the neck and stuff like that, like, Ichi Yamamoto does it really well, but he's, you know, a pale version of Abi, but, like, Takakesho is the guy who does this, the, like, rearing up and charging, and, and Nishiki Fuji just did it, and I, my mel- my jaw just dropped, I was like, this guy is fucking fighting him at his own game. Like I said, I didn't think he was gonna win, but, like, the fact that he was willing to just do it, I was like, holy shit, like, I was really impressed. Yeah. I, I agree. That, that to me says something about his mentality and, like, just what he is saying about wanting to be here. Yep. He he had a really tough end of last tournament. Um, so he was nine and one uh, going into week twelve, and then lost to Tobizaru Tamawashi Takakesho, like you said. But finished things off with a win over Kotono Waka, which is a really big deal. Beat Wakamoto Haru, who's been really good lately. Um, I I will also be extremely excited to see him here because he he had eleven wins, won the Jurio U show, and jumped up all the way from Jurio six into uh into Makuuchi, which is impressive enough. But then back to back ten win tournaments, so to go all the way from M seventeen, technically to go all the way from J six to M five in uh what is this like a six month span in half a year? It's been a stellar rise. I love that specific match that you brought up because that says he's not going to be scared of these dudes up at the top, but now we get to see. All right, you've got the mental game for it. Can you beat them? Yep, he's not going to get a lot of padded matches. He's going to be hitting everybody this time, and I'm I'm curious to see what he'll do. Yeah, same here. And just as an aside, he's a boy from Aomori, traditional sumo country, man. Aomori is is like the heartland of sumo. Like, So, you know, I, I like a little bit of that Aomori pride coming out too. <laughs> um, moving down then, so uh, those are sort of our outside contenders up at the top. 
But now, uh, sort of Maegashira 6 to Maegashira 11 range, these are actually the most exciting guys for me every tournament, because a lot of times this is where you can find someone who is severely, brutally underranked. Like maybe they sat out a tournament, you know, so some Fusenchos, an injury, um, and they just dropped their rankings. Uh, like I said, last November, Hokuto Fuji made uh, a run at a Yusho because he was severely underranked and was sitting here down in uh, the low ranks here. Um, so just going real quick, we've got at M6, Nishikigi and Yuden. M7's got Endo and Myogiru. M8 has Takara Fuji, the sexiest legs in the division. And Toshi Noshin, our lord and savior, Big Tochi. Um, one, one leg, uh, don't care. Uh, M9 has Takanosho, the best smile in the division, and Abi with the arms of fury. M10, Aoyama, the Bulgarian beast, and Chiyoshoma down there. And M11 has uh, Onosho, Go No Show, uh, as the kids say, and Koto Shoho, who I think has some injury problems coming into this tournament. I don't know what's happening there, but this, every tournament, someone in this range, at least through, like, day 11, is contending for the title. So, Nick... Uh, with that heavy-handed uh, uh, sort of um, hint, what do you have to say about this uh, this tier? I straight up think Abby at this level is going to fucking murder everyone. He, he, he was, uh, January was a uh, mega sure of 6 or mm -hmm, 7, mm -hmm. and he went 12 wins. Yeah. So at 9? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, it's not going to be close. The guys he's fighting here, like... I mean, there are, you know, like we hinted at before, there are some sort of old legends down here. Like, Tochinoshin is here, but my man's fighting on one leg. Um, Aoyama is another dude who's, like, massive and really has the technique and skill. And he, But he's got this thing in his career now where he's always going for these pulls. Man, if you try to pull against Abi, get out of here. You're done. You don't want to catch those hands. You're no. going to lose. <laughs> no, it's it's over, yeah. And then, like, Takara Fuji, who, like, I love Takara Fuji, and man, those legs, baby, just, oh, man. But he looks cooked, dude. Like, I, I don't know what has happened the last nine months to Takara Fuji, but dude looks cooked. So, it, and then, you know, Takanosho is a yo-yo man. He's he's like me, Takayumi. In fact, opening the year, Takanosho and me, Takayumi were the two guys that experts were saying, oh, here's the couple of Sekiwakes who are going to make a run at Ozeki this year. And, yeah, sure enough, one of them did, but they're both these yo-yo men, so, like, yeah, if Takanosho is on his game, sure, he'll beat Abi. But if he's not on his game, Abi's going to blow right through him. Like, all these guys in here, Abi could blast. Yeah, I mean, it's fun to watch some of these people. Like, I really, I'm happy that Tochi Noshin still made sure, A, considering, like, how messed up his body is. Yeah. And he's been really performing solidly at this level. And and he had a great run, sort of, in these exhibition matches. They, they finally brought back the, sort of, minor tournaments where they tour the country and stuff. And he's been looking good there, but... Again, that's not necessarily full speed, so I wonder if that helps him with the bad knee, you know? I think it helps, like, yeah, when they're not taking it super seriously, because they don't want to get injured during an exhibition. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, two other guys in here who I'd have my eye on are just Endo and Onosho. Both of them have been nothing but disappointing to me lately, but Endo, another one of these dudes who is a college Yokozuna and stuff, like, basically it's the same story as Abi. Endo is the kind of guy who should probably always be M3, and at M3, he's probably a grinder who goes 7 and 8 or 8 and 7. But at M7, I'm like, oh, man, it's pretty easy to turn your 8 and 7 into an 11-win tournament as long as you get those three cream puffs in there. Yeah, I'm serious to see, like, will he do it? I know. I'm with you. And then Onosho, another guy. I just like Onosho because, like, Sumo has gone over this sort of change over the last couple of years. I don't really know what it is, like... When dudes throw someone out of a ring, they'll stand there and reach out their hand to pull them back in. There's, like, this element of sportsmanship that we see in sports, you know, all around the world. It's not actually that uncommon, except that in sumo it is. Um, you, you don't really do that. It's sort of that combat sport mentality of just, like, if you can't get up, then whatever. Not my fault. And Onosho still has that attitude. So, like I said, sports need villains, and I think Onosho plays it well. Yeah, it is interesting to see, because, like, I think the first couple times I saw it, I'm like, oh, he just tossed somebody on their neck, and he just walked away from them. I'm like, okay, that's different. <laughs> it is so different, and it's so interesting to see a guy like him and a guy like Takanosho so closely ranked, because, like, total opposites. If we were talking about pro wrestling, like, Takanosho's the babyface, and Onosho's the heel. Like, this is classic wrestling stuff. 
Well, even watching somebody like Taran Fuji's level, he just gently sets them out yeah. just outside of the ring. He never pushes them further than they need to go. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Um, so one person I'm kind of interested in is Ryudin at yes. this level. Yes. It's been a long time since he's fought. He had a really rough start yes. at the last time, but he finished really well, if I remember correctly. Yeah, uh, let's see. I know he was on a winning streak. 11 and 4, yeah, but he 10, lost in his first four. 10 straight wins to close out that Basho. And uh, those wins, like Takanosho was in there, Endo was in there, Tochinoshin, like he fought some good dudes. Yeah, because he was ranked pretty highly before, and I don't know if it just needed to get, I think, just get some of that out of his system while you're getting back up into this level. But I'm kind of, I'm interested to see if he'll be able to, or if he's advanced maybe too quickly. I know, because, yeah, he's another one of these dudes who got the COVID drop, right? Like, got punished and got yeah sent down into the boonies, but stuck with it. But he's a former Komusubi. Um, but like you said, that beginning of the tournament, it is almost like they cold cocked him. Like he just wasn't ready for the speed and the power of Makauchi yet. Yeah. I mean, when you go to the difference between Jurio and some of the lower levels to like really hitting some of these top guys, like there's a massive skill wall. Yeah. Like we talk about getting a couple cream puff wins if you're in that like six, seven, eight, nine range. Um, but if in your, if you're in Jurio and you're someone like Yudin, like you should never have less than 10 wins. And in fact, exactly. like, yeah, exactly. And, and, and he, he didn't, well, actually, oh no. Yeah. He, he had a nine win. What disappointing May of 2022. Ryudin, how dare you? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. So I, I'm there with you. Cause it's kind of the same thing. So I'm curious. Okay. At M six, do you get cold cocked again? Those first five days, uh, and then recover like you did last time in your first trip back to Makuchi? Or can we say from those 10 wins in a row that you shook all the rust off? I, I don't know. I think he's going to hit. I would be surprised if he won a whole lot of his first like 3-4 matches just from that same, just being kind of rusty. Mm-hmm. I would say day like 5 through 8 is going to decide the whole thing for him. Yeah. Well, how... he, was, he went up too fast again, or if he's just going to get back up to where he was. Right, yeah, can he still do it? Because um, he's he's got all the physicals, he's big, he's got wingspan, he can lean on a guy, I'll, we'll just have to see. Um, anyone else in this sort of outsider range that you are intrigued about, either going up or going down? Uh, no, I think that's about all that sticks out to me. Other than, again, I just love Takano Show. I want him to do super well, just purely because he's such a wonderful person. I know. He's another one of those guys, like, we've had some heartbreakers this year, man. The fact that he was not able to get it done in May. I just, ugh. I feel like that was his shot. His only shot. I know. Everything lined up for him just perfectly. I know, but like you said, he's at that same nine as Obi. If we get the on version of Takano Show here... He's locked in for those same 11 wins that he had in May, and then it's just a question of, can you beat the two or three big boys that they match you up against in the second week? Yep. Um, I hope to see it. Same, yeah. And then, so closing it out, these are the absolute wild cards and dudes who are just, like, newly promoted or guys riding it down, just trying to stick in the division. This 12 to 16, I'm just going to go across real quick. Um, At M12, we've got Kotoeko and Chiyotairu. M13, Okinoumi, the Jelly Jiggler, and Oho. M14, Ichi Yamamoto and Azumaru back in the division. Welcome back, Azumaru. M15 has Kagayagi, uh, also welcome back, a traditional yo-yo man. And Atami Fuji making a uh, Makuuchi debut. Dude just turned 20 uh, two months ago. Um, which is insane if you look up a picture of him in the size of this man. Um, I'm looking at the picture. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> and then M16, the big salt throw, Tetsuyoshi, and Hira Domi getting a second chance after a disappointing debut uh, last tournament. Man, I actually... The, the cool thing about sumo is the same reason why people say they like European soccer or whatever is that idea that not only are some teams competing for a championship, but other teams are like competing for their lives to not get demoted out of the division. Well, in sumo, we got the same thing. It's so exciting to me. These guys grinding at the bottom, uh, fighting to stay in. Um, someone like Tetsuyoshi, which, like, if he goes down, we, we've seen some terrible things happen to some guys we love. Uh, rest in peace, Chiyomaru, you know? Like, when you get down here, is this going to be the end of the big salt throw, Nick? I was going to say, losing the salt throw would feel like it would be just devastating to the community like everybody's so hyped when they see that everyone loves the salt throw he's the lebron james of sumo 
I'm like, I don't know, do you just bring him back just to do one one good salt throw at the beginning of the tournament? Oh my god, just like the bow twirling. Like, do you just say that, and now we will have Makuuchi fighting and a big salt throw. <laughs> I, would, I would love it if they added that in there just to keep him around. Like I said, even that bow twirler who's he's older, he's terrible, but he's the best they've ever had at it. It's so good. He's just a historic bow twirler. I'm with you. I'm, I'm all for, like, keep, keep the salt throw, but... I mean, this is going to be a subplot for me. I'm going to be rooting for Teretsuyoshi aggressively this entire tournament because I just don't want to lose the guy. I want him to say just high enough to keep in here. Yes. Although, I guess he they have a buffer with no Mega Shiro 17s. I mean, so that helped a little bit. <laughs> Technically, except for, I guess the reason they don't have that is because of the extra Komasubis and extra Sekiwakes. <laughs> and I'm hoping, yeah, I mean, if that evens out, I'm like, maybe, maybe he'll stay. Yeah. But I mean, like, looking around here... You know, he can, he can beat Kageyaki, for sure. He can beat Azamaru. We'll see with Atami Fuji. Atami Fuji is an extremely exciting young prospect, but in my personal opinion, basically, Hidodomi and Teretsuyoshi uh, should both have gotten demoted out of Makuuchi um, after the last tournament. The only reason they didn't is because Jurio was awful. There was no one, they were reaching to get the three guys that they got. The only guy who I think really deserved to be promoted was Azumariu in Jurio. Um, but there were like five dudes who needed to come down from Makuchi. So they kind of split the difference um, and then dragged up Atami Fuji. I think they might have gone too early for him. Um, in Jurio, he's been grinding, but in the higher Jurio ranks, he's just been getting his Kachikoshis and not really much beyond that. Um, so I'm re- he's another one of these guys. He's got the physicals. Atami Fuji is a guy that, if we flash forward and he's 25 years old, I could totally see him being a Yokozuna. But I'm curious if they brought him up too early and, like, are going to mess him up, you know? Do you think they brought him up and that he's just going to get beat down, drop, and then... I feel like once they... Once they drop out of the Makuuchi, it's people don't look at him the same anymore. I know. Well, they lose that shine. He's twenty. He's twenty years old. I know. I know. It's I'm I'm right there with you because it's it's even that same thing about like they they want them to do what Nishiki Fuji did. You know that's that's what yeah. they're looking for. If I if I bring you up, uh, then I want you. And and you know he he did it or whatever, but no one else does really. Like yeah, he was kind of a freak thing. Like, I think he's just naturally super gifted. He trains with the Yokozuna. Like, mm-hmm. it's just things lined up for him. And I think he's, I think he's in a, a, like just a unique person. Yeah, yeah. And, and hopefully Atami Fuji can do the same thing. I think he's got the talent for it, but I, I don't know. I, I'm just shocked that he's had back-to-back eight-win tournaments in Jurio because I expected him to blaze through that division, uh, even when he was 19, you know? Like, he's a guy that I've had my eye on. I haven't been watching Sumo that long, but since he was, like, uh, 18 years old, and now to see him kind of slow down was just, made me sort of pause, you know? Yeah, I'd almost hope, I guess, after hearing that, like, maybe he'll have just, like, a slower rise. I, there's yeah. no way he'd survive, like, a Nishikafuji rise. Right. We, we can... he goes up two or three each time. I yeah, you do it. Yeah, we can look at Kotonowaka, right? Kotonowaka in in 2021, I would say was a, he was right there next to um, Wakataka Kage uh, and sort of just building this reputation as a grinder. Um, now he was obviously good or whatever, but yeah, maybe it'll be that kind of thing. Like maybe it will take him a couple years, but then maybe he gets to the point where, like Kotonowaka, we're sitting there saying, "Why is this man not in Sanyaku? Like, what are they doing?" Yep. Um, other than that, like. I'm hoping Azumaru can get his first ever Kachikoshi in Makuuchi. The man has been trying for so long. His He made his Makuuchi debut in 2013. He has never had a Kachikoshi. He is a yo-yo man. So has he just been bouncing back and forth between bottom Makuuchi and top Jurio? Yup, yup. That's been... Looks, I like the cut of his jib. I do too. That that jib is high quality. I just, he looks like he's so serious. Like a... I, I hope he does well. I do too. Dude is like, and it's, you and I are now of an age where it's not often that we can actually find athletes who are older than us, but he is older than us, so I'm like, yeah, come on, guy, prove it, prove that it can still be done. That's the worst part when they're like, oh, Tamawashi's one of the oldest who's ever, like, who's won recently. I'm like, he's only a few years older than I. I know, he's 37, and I'm like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody, I really, I always want Ichi Yamamoto to do well. Oh, same. Like, 
he's literally like he oh, he kind of looks like Abby. He acts like Abby. He fights like him, but he just can't do it for some reason. He just doesn't. Yeah, he's just not. I I think he's got everything there except for that extra bit of physical gift. You know, like we talk about this in other sports all the time or whatever. But like practice and training and effort can definitely get you to a certain point. But at some point, like just to use basketball as an example, like at some point if you were born five two. Like, game over, man. Like, you need some sort of physical gifts. And Ichi Yamamoto has the long arms, but he really doesn't have the upper body strength that Abi has. He doesn't have the lateral movement that Abi has, you know? I don't know. It's kind of the same thing. I know people hate on Abi, but yeah, I think it's just like he's so perfect for that style. Yeah. That, like you said, I think Ichi Yamamoto, just, he's just missing that. Yeah. And it sucks, because I think he's better than a 14, but... Maybe not, dude. I know he's he's so he's another one who got robbed by the uh, the the great COVID uh, debacle tournament of September. Um, but also just like his story's so good, man. The dude was he, so he's from Hokkaido, so he's obviously up in the boonies, up in corn and cheese country. Um, and like he was a civil servant. His he said he wanted to do sumo. His parents said, "Don't do that. You have a nice government job. Just stay behind your desk and quietly do your business until you turn 60. And he's like, "No." And and he he made it, man. The dude's in Makuchi. Like you, you cannot root for this man to fall out of the division. It's impossible. He's he's the story of the century. Yeah, I mean, even if he hits that 10, 11 level, I'd still I'd be happy. That yeah. would, that would make me feel like it's safe enough. Where yeah. it's like, okay, he's going to stick around for a little bit. Just stabilize. Get into that, yep. yeah, the, the low, like, yeah, top ten. But, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. <laughs> um, other than that, like like we said, uh, I, oh, oh, what are your thoughts on Oho? Because he's another one who's one of these blue bloods, has family history up at the uh, top of sumo. Um, but, like, and, and even his first tournament up, actually, we were just talking with Atami Fuji. Uh, Oho is a guy who came up from Jurio and then uh, opened up his very first tournament. He was 7-3 and three and then promptly lost five straight matches and got sent back down but bounced immediately back up. And now he's kind of just like grinding. He's gotten one Kachikoshi in four attempts up in uh, Makuchi. But like you look at him and you see his height and you see that he's already got the weight and you know that he's got the family history and the pedigree and I'm just like, why is this not happening for him? I just, I have not been wildly impressed mm-hmm. with really much of his stuff. Mm-hmm. Like you said, I think, I don't know what's there. It's just, maybe it's just not happening for him, or he just isn't quite good enough. I I, I personally hate this when anyone, like, analysts say this about athletes, sort of, but, like, dude just seems soft. Like, where, like, like with Shodai, I'm like, where's the grind? Can we put Meisei's brain in your head, please? Like, where's the anger? Where's the Onosho anger? Give it to me. Yeah, and I mean, at least at least showed I waited until I got to an Ozeki before that started <laughs> happening. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Um, dude, a guy who does have anger, though, I don't expect him to really do anything, but, like, if anyone is, like, new to sumo and just looking to ride a roller coaster, like, watch Chio Taidu. The man is, like, such an electric boulder. Um, when he gets up in that initial clash, it's always so exciting. He's got the big Elvis sideburns, which is fun. Like, I don't know, he's super fun to watch. It just never goes anywhere. I don't know why. You know, there's some of those people that are always there just going to be there. And like you said, like they're fun to watch. They're not yeah. going to win. Yeah. They're yeah. probably not going to get top six, but yeah. they're good. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it's one of those things where, like, a lot of the stuff we say is so harsh. But at the end of the day, these dudes are at the top of a massive pyramid. Like, they are the best of the best just because they're not, like, Yokozuna level. Like, they would destroy anyone in their path, you know, that weren't in this uh, top echelon. I actually, I was just about to say the same thing. I'm like, oh god, he's only a mega sheer of fourteen. I'm like, that he's beating out thousands of yes. people. Yes, so many. Yeah, Ichi Yamamoto, Like that makes it even more impressive. His like Cinderella story. Like the idea that, dude, how many how many kids want to be a Cinderella like him? And look how far he went. Like if he had just gone into Jurio, where he was earning a salary from it, that's enough to have proved his parents wrong. But still, he kept going higher. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, to see him at this level, like it's still. I know it's easy to be like, oh, whatever. If he drops down a little bit, be like, oh, he was never that good. But he's great, yeah. realistically. Yeah. So that's kind of our take on the Bonds K. A lot of exciting stuff going on in this tournament. Um, now we'll just kind of do uh, – we're going to cram two shows into one here because, like uh, like we said, uh, I dropped the ball a little bit on the actual Bonds K breakdown. But, um, uh, Nick, who uh, who's a newcomer? So someone who's either fresh to this tournament 
or new in the first couple uh, is in their first couple tournaments back in Makuchi or debuting that you really think is going to have a stellar performance. We might have already spoiled some of this. We got a little excited in our Bonske talk, but who you got for a newcomer? I'm never going to stop plug- plugging Nishka Fuji. Yes. I think he's just going to keep going. Like Unless something wild happens, like he gets injured, I do think he's going to hit... I would say he's probably going to hit Sanyaku in the next... Maybe like two, three. Yes. And that's a wild... I know, man, that's a wild thing because he's got to beat a lot of people, but I think he can do it with I... how much he's been doing. I know, and, and, like, when you talk about him having, like, a surprise performance or something this tournament, like, I look at the guys around him, so in that M1 to M5 range, he can beat Hokuto Fuji, he can beat Sadanoumi, he can beat Wakamoto Haru, he can beat Uda, he can beat Midori Fuji, he can beat Ichi Nojo, he can beat Meisei, he can beat Kota Nawaka, he can beat, like, he can beat all those dudes. They're all really good, but, like, even fighting these good wrestlers, that's eight wins. He could beat all of those dudes. Oh, yeah. And, like, is he, I don't know. I don't know that he's good enough. Well, I mean, who knows what happens? We've been it's been so wild the last like this entire year, which is the only year I've been watching. Yeah. He could go against somebody like Wakata Kakage and Takikesho and just for some reason win. It ha- it's been happening. I know. Yeah. It, this has been a wild time for Sumo that could totally happen. And just like you said, I just want to reiterate this point. Like I, I think that NHK World pulls him down or whatever, but if you're listening to this and what like look up that match between Takakesho and Nishiki Fuji, like that won me over to this man. That was insane. The fact that he, like, went toe-to-toe with an absolute bull and just did it. Yeah, I mean, he's rising, rising even slightly faster than Ryudin. Ryudin has way more experience totally. at this level. Yeah. Um, but speaking of Nishiki Fuji, if he's going to make a run up into Sanyaku, who do you think is going to drop out after this tournament? Who do you think can't hold on to it? Because we've been talking about how volatile Sumo has been, especially in 2022. Who do you think is losing those ranks up there? I, like I said, I think I'd be surprised if Mitaki Umi doesn't drop down a few more levels at this point. Mm-hmm. daisho has been kind of slipping. I love Tobizaru. I don't know if he's going to stay up here. I don't either. I think we all need to relish this. This this beautiful golden moment before the tournament actually starts because I don't know that it's going to go well. I, I just don't know how it's going to go. I think he's hit some really lucky tournaments. Mm-hmm. But the first, what, four this year, he was pretty consistent not beating those top guys, so yes. I don't know. Right, he was having good tournaments, but just never turning it around against the big boys, and then he finally did. But he turned it around against the big boys when the big boys were collapsing, when we had these, like, histo- other than Takakesho, when the Ozekis were just awful. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I, I'm i right there with you. I, I think Mitake Yumi is probably... Man, I don't know that the dude is healthy. I don't, I don't know. Um, but Tobizaru, for sure, I don't think he can hang on to that. And I know you said Nishiki Fuji, it might take him a little longer to get up there. Um, if we, let's say that, you know, it could totally happen that we lose uh, Tobizaru and another Komosubi, Mitakayumi drops down, you know. Um, but assuming that they keep the same number of Sanyaku that they have this time, who's someone who you think can and will make the breakthrough? Who's going to get up into Sanyaku by the end of this tournament? I have no doubt that Kota Nawaka is going to end up there. It's It's been an absolute shock that he hasn't gotten there yet, right? Yeah. Like, he's so consistently good against those guys. Mm-hmm. There's no way he's not up there. Yeah. like. And, of course... Oops, sorry, go ahead. No, I was, they, they trapped him at M2 for three tournaments in a row and then finally moved him up to M1 after, like, his least impressive tournament of the three. But he uh, had an Ozeki sweep to open the May tournament. Insane. Um, and then he almost had an Ozeki sweep to open July, but Takakesho got him right at the end of their match. I, he, he, can, he can run with those guys. Um, and then I think uh, in the last tournament, I don't think he fought Takakesho. I don't remember, but he beat both Shodai and Mitakeyumi when they were Ozeki. Yeah. And I just... I th- he kind of got screwed, I think, a little bit on the positioning with all the COVID stuff. Like, that was so mm-hmm. weird. Like, and I'll give it to him. They didn't know how to handle that. That was yeah. the first. Yeah. I agree. But another one, there's no way Abi doesn't cut. If he doesn't win, he's uh-huh. in, like, the top two. Yeah. At this level, he's going to steamroll everyone. I know. He, like, Abi, um, in fact, let's even, like, skip ahead. So, Kota nawaka has been getting shafted, and so we definitely see that guy going up. Um, yeah. But Abi, like, 
13 wins, right? Like, I, right? What do we think? I, at least. I think he's going to hit that 13. I mean, there's always going to be a couple. Like, they'll throw, they'll still throw somebody at the, at him at the end that'll maybe challenge him, maybe throw him off. Like, kind of usually happens, but yeah. I think he's got it. And I think he'll be back in the Sanyaku then. Wow! That's, that's going to be super impressive if he does it. You think he'll go all the way up to Komusubi from M9? I think he could, depending on how he does, I think he could do it. He went from 6 to six to Sekewake. Yeah, yeah, they skipped. I think he could hit Komosubi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, and if he truly did 13 wins and a special prize at the very least, or 13 and a, a Yusho and a special prize, like, 13 and a Yusho and a special prize, then I think I'm with you. Like, then it's just a matter of can they find enough guys to move out to make room for him. Kind of like, because Takayasu's been running into a brick wall here. Um, not being able to break in because there's just not enough guys dropping. Um, but, like, Abi is going to blow people up. It, it's going to be insane. The The one matchup that's always bad for him is guys who have a low center of gravity. Uh, you know, they're short and big uh, because yeah. his technique relies on stretching guys out and getting them off balance. So these dudes who are big but also tall and top-heavy, um, someone like Nishkigi or Ryudin, I actually usually expect him to do good against those guys because he can get them off balance. Um, but uh, I don't... So just to say that, like, I don't see anyone around him who fits that profile that's going to give him a hard time. Traditionally, he's had some brutal battles with Takakesho for that reason, and he's also had some brutal battles with the likes of Wakataka Kage because Wakataka Kage just doesn't... doesn't mess with Abi's style. You know, he's like, nobody, we're going to grapple. Enjoy. Those are the two that I was looking at, I think, towards yeah. the end. Like, that's going to be the real challenge for him. At least consistently. Shodai, I think, is, he's done pretty... Shodai's done pretty well against him, but again, who knows? He's who knows? so up in the air. Yeah, we have no idea, because you and I both think that it, there is an alternate universe where Shodai's a, a Yokozuna. I think yeah, we both believe exactly. that. And, and that world, but we are, in the folding universes, we are, continue to move further and further away from that reality. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm right there with you. Like, I, I kind of, I don't know that he's going to win it. If I was going to pick a winner, it's probably going to be something safer, and I would pick someone like Takakesho, who I do think if Terano Fuji is out, Takakesho is the class of this division. But he's shown so many cracks in the armor over this last year. And in fact, just injury history in general that, I don't know, um, and Abi is someone who's actually usually been healthy until he had, was it a shoulder and an elbow injury that he had to drop out of last tournament? Yeah, did he have a... Was that him or was that Terunofuchi that, like, that messed up their heel or their toe? Oh, uh, oh, he might have had a toe injury as well. Dude, he was really that. banged up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and... It's a bummer. I think it was Takakesho so small and to like operate at that size has got to be really hard on his body. Oh yeah, it's insane. Like to put that much weight on that frame, it's insane. Like sumo is such an unhealthy sport. I enjoy watching it so much, but there's part of me that wishes like that they could roll the clock back and not like I don't know. You know, American sports put like salary caps in and stuff like that, and I'm like can we put a weight cap on these guys? Or not a weight cap, but like a BMI cap. Like, you can weigh more if you are taller, but just, like, stop killing yourselves. You all have diabetes. You all end up with kidney failure. Like, oh, man. Well, that's why it is nice to see somebody like Abi, Hushoryu, Wakataka Kage, where yeah. it's like, they're definitely bigger, than far bigger than the average, um, like, Japanese person. But I yeah. feel like they're operating at a weight where... It's not going to be detrimental. Yeah. No, I'm totally I'm totally with you. Um, and then dudes like, we've always got the fit fat boys, like Koto Eko, Teretsuyoshi traditionally has kind of been in that vein. Ishiyuda, rest in peace, you know, like after that neck injury, I think his career's over. He hasn't fought since that neck injury where he got really violently thrown from the ring, which I guess is one of the risks of being a smaller dude. But like, it, it's always great to see dudes like that. Oh, uh, or even our relative newcomer, Midori Fuji, the Mighty Mouse. Um the, seeing those small guys do it, uh, you know, I, I kind of want to watch those guys rise to kind of prove to everyone else, like, hey, you don't have to destroy your body. You you can. That is a competitive choice you can make, but you don't have to. Well, even another reason I like to plug Abby for this one specifically is it kind of pushes, like you and I have talked about before, when they have taken a single break, they come back so strong with that extra time to run. Yes. Yes. Uh, Takayasu 
has twice had to sit out tournaments this year um, because of COVID, not for him, but COVID in his stable. And after both of those times, he came back and finished second in the U show race, contended for a title each time. Sumo is so brutal. There's this old world Japanese mentality that's so frustrating where they just destroy these guys' bodies. Tochi Noshin, at this point, rest wouldn't even help. But man, if he could have just like not lost his rank, if you could have like one tournament you get to sit out a year, something that he didn't have to come back and fight on an injured knee and just wreck himself. Yep. Yeah, I mean that could have like you said, I don't know, it wouldn't have saved him, but like it could have prolonged his career. Yep. It, exactly. Like he's out there grinding, he's at M eight, he's still doing great, he's probably still got a couple of years of sumo left in him, but like he's not getting Ozeki back. And he's not no. ever winning a U show again. No, he's solidly at his level, but I just, with his legs, there's no way he's getting higher. I want him to. I'd love it. Same. Yep. <sighs> Tough. Um, so, yeah, I think um, that, I guess it's, Takakesho would be my pick to win this, just being a little more conservative, but I'm right there with you with that Obby pick. I think 13 wins is totally doable in this tournament, and we both have kind of picked a couple guys who we think will give him a hard time that maybe are the reason why he loses a couple matches. Um I don't know, anyone you're thinking is dropping out of the division in particular, or anyone that's exciting, or maybe that's too negative. I guess, yeah, I don't know anybody necessarily that's dropping out, but one thing I do want to say, like you said with Takakesho, I'd almost, I do kind of hope he wins, mm -hmm. because after the last tournament, they hit all the Ozeki so hard, and he really didn't do anything wrong. I know, I'm with you. He's had a decent enough record, like he's the only one who's been really holding up and yet, and he gets get pulled into it with everyone else. Yeah, he he. If you if you throw out January where he had to drop out because of an injury, um, and then uh, like he other than dropping out for injury, hasn't had a Makikochi a losing record since January of 2021, and even then he actually did have to drop out for the last six days again because of it. Like, it's just injuries, man. The dude racks up double-digit win tournaments like crazy, and when he has to, even when he's not 100%, he'll grind out Kachikoshi still. He'll stay in there and fight. Like, yeah, I, I'm with you. Which I really I want him. Which is exactly what you expect at somebody's level, where it's like, oh, you're not picking up to 100%, but you're not going to go negative. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, he, it, they talk about disrespecting the rank. I think he's respecting the rank. He's up there battling, man. I agree. I mean, I, I like Shodai just because it's so goofy to watch somebody at that level, but 4 and 11? Come on. You can't compare that to what Takakesho does. No, yeah. How How is he, and, and or, or uh, Mitakeyumi, straight up losing yeah. the rank? Like, how did the Sumo Association have Takakesho's name in their mouth with those two? Come on. I, I feel like he probably would have walked in that meeting just absolutely shocked that he was even getting addressed with this. Getting blasted, yeah. Like, he's he's essentially getting punished for what his two Ozeki mates did. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so I just, you know, uh, he wouldn't miss... I, with, with, he had a 10-win tournament and an 11-win tournament are his last two. If he comes out, if it's like him and Abby, and they're both like 13-1 and one going into the final day, like, again, they were fantasy booking. This means nothing. Don't take any of this as analysis. But, like, you know, if they're on that final day of showdown and then he goes 14-1 and one and beats Abby and, you know, gets an outstanding performance or a technique prize and also the U show, and he has three double-digit tournaments in a row, one which was 14 wins, like, with Terra no Fuji looking the way he is, give him the, give him the belt. Give him Yokozuna. I would love to see that. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. They generally want you to win like two out of three U show in your last three, in your three most recent tournaments, or they want you to have had a 15 and 0, but like, I don't know, Sumo Association, it's just not happening. Terano Fuji is a wounded Yokozuna. Like, if you want a Yokozuna, I think Takake Show is the last great hope. Yeah, I know, I agree. I mean, I'd wonder how long could he hold it? Yeah, I know, I know, because he can get up there. there. Get a year or two out of that. Yeah. He's so young. Takakesho, though. Like, it, he's so young. He's only 25. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was... I was going to say, like, 30. Dude, that's why it's so heartbreaking that the injuries derailed his Yokozuna run in the first place. Because when, when, the, when those injuries came, he was, like, 22. God, that's terrible. I know, I know. So, I don't know. But 
This is going to be a stellar tournament. We all want Terano Fuji to come back. He makes it the most exciting. But there's something about these Wild West wide open tournaments. Like, if Abi and Takakesho are at their gun slinging, if Hoshoryu and Wakataka Kage are throwing guys, if Shodai, like, wakes up and starts... If, if, if the hibernating bear wakes up just in time now that he's in Kyushu, like, we could be in for another exciting tournament here. I think there's enough there, like you said, where I think this one's going to be really good. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Can't wait. Uh, Nick, any final words you want to leave us with? No, I think we've basically covered everything. That's it. So, everybody, uh, you don't need to watch the tournament. We've covered everything. You've essentially uh, heard it through the dulcet tones of both of our uh, cold, ravaged voices. So, with that, we'll probably try to come back at you maybe uh, around the day eight midway point and see uh, how perfectly correct everything we said was. And to see, it's going to be Takake Shonabi with perfect records just gearing up for a final fight. Couple 8 nose staring at each other with Big Papa Takayasu at 7-1 and one right behind it, rearing up for another second place heartbreak. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody.